Hello folks and welcome back to the land yacht and today we are covering a topic that uh, several people have requested from me and that is the topic of the high voltage junction box and some of the components that we need to fit in here. Um, this is our pre-charging system and some of you have let's just say a bit of a difficulty as to why we need a pre-charging system. So I think we should first of all uh, now that we're in the we're kind of fitting this stuff I'm going to give you a bit of a description as to why that's necessary. Now what we have here is our inverter and these white things here are the DC link capacitors. Now problem is that when we want to start the car, these DC link capacitors are at zero volts. Our battery is at whatever our battery voltage is, in the case of the yacht here, be nominally 192 volts. And that voltage to the inverter is controlled by means of these two contactors. So, you might say, well, that's simple, let's just turn on the two contactors and go driving. Well, if you decide to do that, uh, please ensure that you have a high speed, high definition camera set up at least 10 feet aw away and uh, preferably live stream it so that I can see it. Because if we decided to do that, this is what would occur. Our capacitors, at the time that we would close the contactor would appear as a direct short circuit. Our battery would appear as an infinite current source and we all know what happens when a immovable object meets an irresistible force and that is what would occur here. The first thing that would happen is the two contactors would immediately weld closed so that any chance that you would have of saving yourself would be removed. Then, probably something in the region of, oh I don't know, 10 to 50,000 amps, yes I did say 10 to 50,000 amps, would surge through the battery cables into the capacitors. The heating effect would be so immense that the capacitors would immediately explode, creating a real blob of molten metal and plasma inside your inverter. Uh, what would happen after that um, would depend on a couple of factors like what kind of a main traction fuse that you had fitted and uh, how, you know, close to other components. But one potential outcome is that you could end up with a DIY plasma cutter that would basically then proceed to cut its way all the way through the base plate, down through the motor, down through the subframe of the vehicle until something interrupted the current flow. Um, if you wanted to take it to an extreme, it could do a China syndrome on you. So, we really do need a pre-charging system. And that is what we are going to fit now. And it's incredibly simple. Uh, but as I said, it is a concept that uh, I don't really think has been explained too, too well. Um, and it's something that you really do need. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how I tend to do pre-charging systems. Now, for some high-tech camera work. All right. Okay, you're now magnetically attached to the Land Yachts bonnet. So, how do we do it? How do we stop the EV version of the China Syndrome? Well, all we need is a resistor and a relay. So, this is what we do. 
First thing that you need is a relay that is rated to switch the voltage uh, that you are going to be using. There is no point, and I've seen some people using just normal four pin automotive relays trying to do this. That's a really bad idea because that will weld shut the first time that you energize it. And then it won't really release and you get all kinds of other things like burnt out pre-charging resistors and possible more China syndrome. Now, so what I tend to do is I take a mains uh, 230 volt re re relay. Um, this one is a two pole change over and I wire it so that I'm using the two contacts in series to give myself a double brake capacity. Then depending on my traction system uh, I choose a high power wire wound resistor. Usually I use 100 ohms and in this case uh, that's precisely what I have here in the shape of two 47 ohm resistors. And what these guys will basically do is when we turn on the car the only way that the traction current can get to those capacitors will be through the resistors. And the resistors will limit the current flow until the capacitors charge up to a point that we can safely close the main contactor. With me so far? I hope so. So, let's go ahead and clip it onto the DIN rail here. Struggle to clip it onto the DIN rail because we're on camera. And we're now clipped onto the DIN rail. Oh, yes, I will insulate this for those of you that are currently screaming at your computer screens. Now, this guy is the positive contactor, so this one switches the battery positive to the inverter. So, observe, we now have two wires from the relay that the relay controls. So, this wire will be connected through the first relay contact to one side of the resistor. And this wire will be connected to the second relay contact to the second side of the resistor so that when the relay energizes I will have 100 ohms of resistance between these two points. Now, I'm now going to connect it to the positive contactor as follows. One side to one side of the contactor on the other side, do, 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 to the other side of the contactor. Now, when we switch the car on, the inverter will command this relay and this contactor to close so that I can now supply traction current via the precharge resistor to the capacitors. Once the inverter sees that we have reached a voltage on the capacitors close enough to the traction voltage, usually about 95%, it will then command the main contactor to close at which point it can do so safely. Um, then turn off the pre-charge and we're driving without any China syndrome. So this is it. I'm going to keep wiring and uh, we'll come back when we have something more interesting to show you, uh, but rather than lots of boring wiring. So stay with us. Okay, so while I was doing this, I thought I'd give you guys a quick uh, section on this because um, one of the big problems with uh, running AC motors is getting noise on the encoder. Now, this particular motor that we've in here uses an encoder bearing on the rear, the rear end, which was fairly common for uh, motors of this era. Now, they used this kind of a, just an automotive plug here. And one of the biggest problems with this is it doesn't carry the screen and also it separates the conductors into a space here that lets them pick up noise. 
So when I had this inside the terminal box here, basically I was getting to a point that the RPM signal was so badly distorted uh, that the motor didn't run properly and was just tripping, tripping out over current all of the time. So what I've done is uh, the wire comes out in the terminal box around here. I've cut a notch in the box so I can bring the cable straight out. I'm going to run this uh, back up to the inverter now. We'll see if that makes things better. Um, kind of think it will because just for a test I had taken the cover off the terminal box and that made stuff uh, better. So I'll right, just go wire this up see what we get. Alrighty folks, I feel like one of those um, crazy stupid car channels and they say we got to get this car out of here today man so what do we got okay power steering is in lead and running high voltage junction box is mostly done but we haven't wired up the charger at all yet um, inverter is working spinning the motor we have to tune it but it is you know it's be it'll be enough to drive the car off the lift tonight which was the aim of the game um, what, what else uh, we had a problem with the encoder earlier uh, so that's kind of solved now I've got the coolant system plumbed I've just jumped 12 volts to the coolant pump just to purge that we did of course have a slight leak and I had assumed it was going to be from my JB Weld uh, special on the inverter but it turned out to be from the inverters original uh, coolant pipe there I've just got to get a better angle on the Jubilee clip so basically we should be good enough now uh, oh yeah and of course we have the rad in here and uh, the rad in this case is actually an E39 um, transmission cooler uh, so fits really neatly in here you probably can't see it too well uh, but fits in here very neatly uh, I've got my pipes hooked up to it here I'll put a bolt on that stud there it'll be able to clamp the thing in place so turned out yeah it's turned out pretty neat obviously a lot more to do got to get the charger working you know got to tidy up the wiring got to get the CAN bus oper operational uh, I want to put a T-piece on that return line here and tee it up to the tank so I can bleed out, out air, put a little valve on it. Um, so that's it. We're pretty much... Uh, I made a mess of Dave's workshop here over the last two weeks, so i got to clean up the mess. Then we're going to go see if we can drive the car um, off the lift, so stay with us. Alrighty, folks. Um... Got some good news, the land yacht is rolling and she is really smooth. Just moving back and forth here, just in the workshop, uh, but so far, so good. Um, got a lot of tuning to do and a lot more wiring to finish up, uh, but I think, we're, I think we're on a fairly solid footing here. Um, let's just go for it here a little bit. Uh, I can't show you what's in front of the car because then you'll know the secret, Dave's secret. So I can't be telling you that. Um, here you can look at the floor. When I got manual brakes at the minute, my brake pump relay uh, doesn't like the light control module. This is us moving forward here now. Amazingly smooth. Uh, so very happy with that. Yeah, the yacht's um, the yacht's rolling, guys. So been a hell of a two weeks. Um, but yeah, we're we're good. I'm gonna leave you at that. Uh, try not to do anything crazy on me. And uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Check links in the description to whatever is in there. And until next time, happy yachting.